I'm Rob from Power Station Studios, and we are here with Grin Cynic. This is a great project. It's got a little sentimental value to me because the guitar player, Mike Lee, was part of the very first session that we ever did almost 19 years ago. So that's why kind of coming in, this has been kind of a great fun to get back together and work on some really killer stuff. We've recorded drums, we've uh, recorded bass, and today is actually guitar day, um, which being a guitar player myself makes this a lot of fun. But uh, Mike and I were kind of talking and, uh, you know, we always like to watch those uh, those different shows, uh, uh, Rick Rundown from uh, Premier Guitar. Uh, and we're all geeks and we love that stuff. So. Uh, we figured since they have such massive rigs that they're just awesome. So we wanted to kind of do our own version of running through all this stuff uh, for your benefit. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce here Mike Lee, the vocalist and guitar player of Grand Cynic. So um, getting started in the beginning is the guitars. This one right here is a 1997 custom shop, Les Paul, um, hand built good old Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I really like this guitar. There's a really cool story behind it. I won't go into the whole thing, but uh, I went into a guitar center and they have those, uh, you know, those vintage rooms, right? So, and it was just hanging in there and I just like kind of gravitated toward it. But, oh, yeah. No. I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. Um, one mod that I did was I just took out the, uh, the, the stock pickup and I put a Seymour Duncan Pegasus in there. Uh, makes for a lot of gain. A lot of gain and as you know with Grin Cynic music uh, we require a lot of gain so on that note uh, with Grin Cynic you do a drop tuning yes um, so what tuning are you so we are on this? we are tuned to drop B which uh, I really enjoy because it gives us a lot of different tones it's versatile um, and it's very heavy too so um, it goes well with my voice um, it's easy to sing and it's fun so that's my 97 um, has some some stage wounds to it. Um, so that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. So um, so let's talk about this next guy here. What do you got going on with this, this one? This next one here is... This is the recent one, right? This is a recent uh, pickup from me. Yeah, absolutely. This is the 60th anniversary 59 Les Paul uh, reissue. So um, yeah, again, another one that I saw at the store. Uh, you know, these are you know, age to perfection and all that other fun stuff comes with the badge on it. 1959 to 2019 Gibson Custom. And I was really looking for one of these. I always wanted one because of the tone that I get out of this. Um, playing it into, uh, for example, a Vox um, AC30, which we're going to be using on the record. You get a really cool, good kind of 70s tone with it. Um, so on, on that note, are you using this for some of the layering tones and the clean tones? Absolutely. And then using the other Les Paul for some of the, the meat and potatoes and the, and the rhythm parts. Yeah, we're going to layer a lot with this. Which is why you still have the stock pickups in this Absolutely. Guy. Everything is, is pretty stock on, on this guitar. Um, what gauge strings are you using on these guys? These are 11 through 56. Okay. So they're pretty heavy, but again, we, we tuned down to drop B, so we don't want them flopping all over. Okay. Do you have a particular uh, brand string that you stick with, or Darius? Yeah, Darius. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I've been using those for years. So uh, yeah, this is my number two, and uh, that's it with guitars. You know, back at the ranch, got a lot more guitars, but I believe for the record that we're doing and the songs that we have, um, these two guitars are really going to make it sound special um, and give the tone that we're going for. So, and we'll do some more on the guitars that once we get everything set up for the studio stuff. But uh, for today's purpose, we're just going to kind of run down the rig, which uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce you to a great friend of ours. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Brian Lamar. Um, Brian's got this crazy history. I mean, he was a signed guitar player. Um, not, not that he was a studio musician. Uh, he's recorded with, with some, you know, uh, uh, How and Cameo and a bunch of cool bands. Um, Back in those days, these big rigs were, I mean, they were even bigger than, than this, but uh, he was kind of at the heartbeat of that stuff. Uh, he even worked with uh, famous rig builder Bob Bradshaw, and through him, he's even worked on rigs uh, through Eddie Van Halen and a bunch of other cool stuff. And um, Mike's had him working on his rig now and building this thing, 
And um, we like to run through that really quick. So, Brian, thanks for being here. All right, thank Always you. love to have you here at Power Station Studios. Love it here, love it here. This guy's awesome. So, I figure Mike went through the guitars. I guess where it goes from there is out the, uh, the uh, input jack and off to your land. Yeah, well, Mike has right here a wonderful world of options. When you think about how the fractal works, it is like having a, a world of stomp boxes, a world of guitar preamps, shall we call them, because we use them as preamps in this setup. It's all modeled, so any one of those things can be memorized and changed for any particular preset. So you got the, the stomp boxes are living in there, and I've separated them into their own inputs and outputs. The preamps of various guitars are living in there, and they're separated. The preamp of the classic Mesa triple rectifier is also in its own space, accessed separately. Then we come out and we have choices of speakers. We have power amps that can run, including the matrix is left and right. That's two power amps. And a third power amp is the actual power amp of the rectifier. So think about it. You've got stomp boxes, preamps, preamp, preamps, all these options. Well, all this has to be plugged into one place and then has to be controlled on stage with a switcher. So what in this case, we've got the, the ground control is the, the controller on the floor and the actual switching is done here in the GCX. So I've taken all these separate components as I have separated them and given them a way that you can say, well, I want this stop box or there's actually a real stop box in the back here too. You can even throw that in the mix. That's in its own world as well. So you say, I want this stomp box from here and I want it to go to this preamp and out that power amp. And then while we're doing that, we'll also take a preamp from here with its own little stomp box characteristic, all memorized digitally, complete recall. And then that can come out of these power amps and come out left and right. You can imagine how many tones you can get with that. And Mike, Mike has got this amazing sense of, 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 of how he puts songs together and he, and he really knows how to get from point A to point B as he moves through a song. And he uses this to, to get that. Well, you know, that's a good point because working with Mike and, and some of the other songs that he's done with Grin Cynic and even some of the other songs that he's done with other projects, um, the, especially with Grin Cynic, it, it's very guitar oriented and some of the songwriting is a is kind of a departure from his style of playing, which is why kind of a rig of this magnitude is so important to him. Um, so I noticed that he's got a, a wireless. He's using the uh, the Line Six wireless in here. So I'm assuming we go from guitar. Yeah, to wireless the actual to signal here. path. Yes, yeah, so guitar is got it. Transmitter is picked up from here, mm -hmm. comes into here, and that's where it actually goes out to the wah and the tuner. Then it goes back in here. So this. These two patch points are just for one little loop, just to get that wall. Oh, so that way he has on-stage tuning. On-stage. And then he can also control the wah separately, because I noticed that he uses the uh, Mark Tremonti wah. Right. So that gives it more of his feel and a little bit more of that gritty exactly. tone that he likes. Then he comes back and goes into this world of choices where, where I have mentioned. So that's when that's where he builds it. Well, the intro of the song is kind of clean here, and then... It, then it gets a little grungy here, and then comes that chord cut, bang! So you basically, know, the signal will get split uh, into the fractal, and then into the uh, Mesa Boogie, and then based on his choices and your guy's settings, goes into the different myriad of, of sounds. So, so the Mesa is a, its power amp is exclusive to two speakers here, and two speakers here. These. Gotcha, the two inside. And then, the, this power amp is exclusive to the outside. Gotcha. Right? So that way, that's the only thing that's exclusive. Everything else can be moved around and repatched gotcha. in the network of, of the switching system. And when this is set up on stage, does he set this up on stage left, stage right, or does he keep them both together? Kind of in his own world because okay, so he has his own little world there. Player here gotcha. And, and they, they, they work together. Okay. And then... Um, we do have his Vox, but we'll talk more about that because that's going to be more of an element in the recording system. But uh, 
Yeah, pretty cool little yeah, setup here, bad. and uh, awesome job, man. I can't wait to fire this thing up and see how we can uh, Roll recreate in. this monster uh, oh, yeah. into, a, into a record. Well, that's so. the beauty of having all this uh, axe effects, is because once the record is done, you can program the whole record and say, well, you know, boom, 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 and then you go out and you do the show, and it all happens. That's awesome. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming Thank by. Uh, Mike, thanks for obviously being here and yeah. giving us a project to rock and roll with. And uh, till next time, I'm Rob from Power Station. We'll talk to you then.